So, Adpocalypse 3.0, I think this would be. I think we already had 2.0. I'm pretty sure that Adpocalypse 3.0 may be upon us. And uh, there's a long conversation here, a long story about what led to that point. Excuse me, I'm going to walk you through it. So, here we have a man by the name of Steven Crowder and Carlos Maza. Maza? I don't know how uh, he pronounces it, but maybe either one. But anyway, um, so Carlos Maza works for Vox. And um, a couple days ago, he went on this long tweet storm where he basically said, like, okay, I have thick skin as a public person. However, um, Steven Crowder has been coming after me for years now. And the way in which he's coming after me, he's attacked my uh, identity. So Carlos Maza is gay and Steven Crowder, you know, has called him a queer, a lispy queer, among other things, and he's made uh, Carlos Maza a target. And so he does this long tweet storm, Carlos does, where he says, like, you know, oh, how could YouTube say they support uh, LGBTQ people and they make a big deal about this and they talk about Pride Month and they have their rainbow play button and whatnot, and they're just using you. They don't really care about you, and they're not interested in protecting the LGBTQ com community. And I'm the perfect example of that. Because this guy's been coming after me. He's been coming after me in a way that crosses the line and violates the terms of service. And it's not fair, and it's not right, and I think they should act. So here's uh, you know me documenting all the examples of Steven Crowder coming after me. So, I actually have that video here for you. Let's play that and then we'll come back and talk more about this. Before we get to the video, uh, with our favorite, favorite <laughs> lispy sprite Anchor from Vox. It's ridiculous. It's bonkers. You're being given a free pass as a crappy writer because you're gay. That center line on his little queer graph there. <laughs> what is, what is Well, that now line? the graph is queer? It is violence, filth. Okay, so the little queer could eat his chips all nonchalantly. It's code for rape, Mr. <laughs> queer eating chips on the Vox channel. Mm -hmm. Chip, 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 but you can eat just one. Like dicks. <laughs> this is what Mr. Gay Vox wants to do. Mr. Lispy Queer from Vox. What, what, what were you holding, Gay Latino from Vox? <laughs> Even his hand movement and fast motion is gay. <laughs> now we're here with a short-haired angry lesbian on Skype. <laughs> and cable news, cable news bitching. Two gay guys sitting there eating a banana. We get the symbolism oh. there. The truth is hiding in a closet two weeks later, probably along to his next Pride Parade out. But this guy on the gay semi-Latino Vox. <laughs> oh, okay, so you really are just an angry little queer. <laughs> All right, can't deal with this sprite anymore. Okay, he just sashays across without a, like, just, oh. The gay Vox sprite is wrong. <laughs> now he could be a tranny, your honor. But how many lispy, angry sprites and Vox sashay across your <laughs> screen and try and tell you otherwise? Or you, by the way, the gay Mexican guy. The gay Latino V-neck. Gay Mexican. Or Mexican gay guy used to work. Mexican oh, gay oh, Latino oh, there oh, at, uh, oh, at Vox. Oh, uh, gay Latino from Vox. The token Vox gay atheist sprite with surprise. Surprisingly, surprisingly flaccid chest, considering how thin he is. It is it's very bizarre to me. Uh, ad hominem, yes, but it was an addendum to fat. So before we get to the exact issue in question here, let me just say a little bit about Steven Crowder. Steven Crowder is tied with Ben Shapiro for the dumbest of the political commentators. I'm not kidding when I say he's wrong about probably over 98% of the issues. So when I say I have no sympathy for Steven Crowder, I mean it. This is a guy who has a video on his channel about how AIDS is a hoax. He's a climate change denier. Get this, he's a Ted Cruz supporter. So I need you to realize how hilarious it is that in the world we live in, there are some people who look at a guy like Steven Crowder and they think like he's edgy or something. You think this guy is edgy? In a field of about a thousand political candidates, he picked Ted Cruz. No, that's okay. Like, I need you to get how insane that is, because when you look at a guy like Trump, for example, and I said this a lot on, on 
when everybody was on the campaign trail. Like, I'm not at all a Trump supporter, not by any stretch of the imagination. But can I see how some people might go, hey, you know what, I disagree with him on a lot of stuff, but there's a chance he breaks up the establishment, and also, he's doing some populist rhetoric. Yeah, that's true. There was a chance he was going to break up the establishment. He didn't do it. And he did populist rhetoric. Again, that was fake. He didn't actually do populist policies. But I could see how I could tap into the mind of somebody in the Rust Belt who lost their fucking factory job who go, yeah, you know what? I'll roll the dice on this guy. And I have sympathy for that person. Even though they were wrong in that vote, and I would have argued with them to the hilt not to vote that way, I can have sympathy and go, okay, it's on the Democrats to craft a better message, to be more populist, to be more anti-corruption and anti-establishment, and then you'll get that guy's vote. So there's a degree of, I got it. I, I don't agree with you at all, but I get it. If you supported Ted Cruz, I don't get it. No, I don't get it. You are, Ted Cruz is a giant fraud. Ted Cruz is a con artist. Ted Cruz has argued, when Democrats say, um, hey, we should limit the impact of private financing of our election and money in politics, because that's basically legalized bribery and legalized corruption. Ted Cruz's response to that is, why do you hate the First Amendment and why are you anti-free speech? So I have, I'm just trying to impress upon you how a guy, like an evangelical Christian far-right extremist loser who's dead wrong about everything, that's not edgy, that's not cool, that's the dumbest fucking shit ever. And if you can't clearly see that Ted Cruz is a fraud and Ted Cruz is wrong about pretty much everything, then I don't... You're on another goddamn planet. Another planet. Ted Cruz. Sporting Ted Cruz. I can't. It's just insanity. Steven Crowder, to this day, argues that Adolf Hitler is a lefty. So, in other words, this is a guy who, I want to give you his his worldview here, his breakdown. Everything left ever is bad. If you're on the left, you're bad, and you're responsible for everything that's wrong. I, By the way, I have no idea where that accent came from. <laughs> that's not at all what Steven Crowder sounds like, but anyway, it just came out that way. Um, but that's his worldview. His worldview is left bad, right good, and now everything I say will be trying to fit that square peg into that round hole and trying to get you to believe that. So, you know, Pol Pot, Mao, uh, Stalin, left, left, left. Mussolini and Hitler, left. So th this is this guy's level of analysis. He's a fucking dipshit. He's a dip. He doesn't know anything. He's wrong about virtually fucking everything, okay? So I have less than no sympathy for a guy like Steven Crowder. And on the policy substance, his show is cancer. It's just flat out cancer. You will 100% know more shit if you didn't watch Crowder than if you watch Crowder. Because if you watch Crowder, you'll just be misinformed. If you watch no Crowder and no news at all ever, and all you have is your gut opinion, okay? You will be way more informed than if you watch Steven Crowder. So there's nothing about him that's edgy. There's nothing about him that's populist or for average people. He's a fucking loser whose arguments bolster the establishment and bolster the far right. So no interest in him whatsoever. Now, having said all that, is what he said there worthy of getting banned? No. So Carlos Maza, that was his argument. His argument was, hey, here's all the things that he said about me. This is harassment. These are anti-gay slurs. Um, he should be taken down. He should be deplatformed. And what YouTube did is they went through, they did, you know, an investigation or whatever you want to call it. And they went through all the videos that were the original videos that Carlos Maza had clipped out here. And basically, the reality of the situation is, like Steven Crowder, hate Steven Crowder. Obviously, I hate Steven Crowder. He was responding to arguments that Carlos Maza made in his, you know, Vox videos. And he was saying, hey, here's where all those arguments are wrong. And in the process of doing that, he said fucked up things, like you heard there. Now, Steven Crowder's dodge is, I'm a comedian. Okay, I mean, 
technically you're a comedian. You're the least funny comedian on the fucking planet. And I'm not saying that from a position of, good sir, I'm offended. I'm saying that from a, the position of, no, you're, you're just simply not funny. <laughs> like, I'm not one to get offended. I don't really give a shit, but you're just not funny. It, it's just like, you suck at this is my point. So it, it is an attempt at humor. I don't think it's funny. Um, and you are targeting him for his sexual orientation. But is that something that should get somebody deplatformed? No. Guys, listen. There are literal ISIS attack videos on YouTube. Literal ISIS attack videos. Uh, you know, that would be something that's <laughs> that crosses a line way more than Steven Crowder ever crossed there. Um, but we don't really bat an eyelash at ISIS attack videos being on YouTube. Why? Because we go, I don't know, it's a free platform. You put whatever the fuck you want to put on it. I, I mean, what are you talking about? That That's what it is. It's what you do. So this gets to a, a fundamental question. What do we want YouTube to be? The original idea is it's a bathroom wall. It's not, there's no curating. There's no editing. There's no censorship. It's just, it's a middleman. It's a service where you upload shit you want to upload, and that's it. So it's not in the business of, I'm, I have to go through all the, do you have any idea how much content is uploaded to YouTube on a daily basis? I mean, it's a fucking behemoth. They couldn't, even if they wanted to, objectively enforce some sort of terms of service here. So since their role is, they're not in the business of, oh, we're going to micromanage this, then they're not in a position where they can react to something like that. Now, if you say to me, well, come on, man, there's got to, you can't have complete and utter anarchy, I would agree with that. But then the question becomes, what are the rules? Give me some basic rules and then we'll work off of that. And in my mind, as you guys know, and I've said it all along and I maintain it to this day, really the only things you can or should be able to act on are direct threats of violence, okay, some sort of doxing, um, and just the clearest examples ever of, like, libel or, or slander. And, again, those the bar for that is so high you have no idea. You can't just do what Dave Rubin says and, You called me a conservative and I don't like it, so I'm gonna fucking sue you or whatever goofy bullshit he's saying. That doesn't hit that level. So, even though I despise Steven Crowder, I mean, I, again, I think it's a tie between him and Ben Shapiro for the dumbest and most wrong commentators. And I mean that sincerely. They're terrible. <laughs> They're insanely bad at this. But that that's irrelevant. That doesn't matter. Did, is what what he said here, does this is this something that he should be pulled down over? No. And then listen, I would sincerely ask not just Carlos Maza, but others. In your mind, what 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 exactly is your end game? What's your goal here? Do you think that anybody who not just says stuff like Steven Crowder says here, but the fundamental logic of what you're arguing for is if somebody is a bigot and do I think Stephen Crowder is a bigot? Yes. <laughs> I do. If somebody's a bigot should they have be not allowed to participate in public life at all? So if somebody if we learn somebody's a bigot, should all of those people be fired from their jobs respectively? And should they be, you know, not be allowed to get a loan or function in society because they're bad people? And again, I just want to be clear. I'm not arguing with the idea that Steven Crowder is a bad person. I think he is a bad person. But I'm saying even though he's a bad person, and even though he said fucked up shit, I don't think that that's worthy of deplatforming. Um, so, and, and you could call it radical. I just call it basic, uh, uh, the basic application of the principle of freedom of speech. Now, I gave you my few examples of when there is a line that's crossed, but those are so fringe and so rare that they're not even worth getting into. The bulk of the content that's on YouTube, even if it's horrendous stuff. I mean, how many videos are there that speculate about 9-11 being an inside job? You know? Uh, how many? And, and if you say, well, we gotta take that down, because what about the fucking victims of the families of 9-11 and blah, blah, blah? Well, okay, but then there's the JFK conspiracy, and like, more than half the country thinks it wasn't just... <laughs> you know, um, Lee Harvey Oswald to kill JFK, should all of those come down too? Now, some people say yes to this, but this is the problem. You open up Pandora's box, and it's a giant slippery slope, and it's not even like, hey, theoretically, we'll go down the wrong path. We literally are going down the wrong path, because as this happened, uh, Adpocalypse 2.0 was kicked off. Now, here's what ended up happening. Steven Crowder, 
um, lost, uh, excuse me, won against Mazza on the deplatforming front. And YouTube came out and said, hey, listen, man, our hands are tied. We can't, we can't pull them down because none of that is something that's, you know, crosses the line enough where we could pull them down. But what they did say is, we are going to demonetize them. Okay, that's weird, because if you just had said he didn't violate the terms of service, he didn't cross the line, so how can you demonetize him? And the reality is, keep it real, they're just responding to social media pressure. They're just responding to people tweeting them all day long and saying, oh, how could you, oh, you hate uh, LGBTQ people, uh, how dare you allow this kind of harassment to spread on your platform and whatnot. So they caved to the pressure, they demonetized him, but in the process of demonetizing him, they demonetized hundreds of channels. So, who else got demonetized? Well, there's a guy by the name of Ford Fisher who tracks extremism. He was demonetized. Why? Because they can't distinguish between, like, hateful content that is bolstering the hateful content and content that is calling out the hateful content. Uh, there's another guy, Alsop History. He was banned for hate speech, even though, of course, he didn't do hate speech. He features Nazi propaganda for historical reasons. And poor guy was tweeting. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm devastated by this. You know who else was demonetized? Our buddy TJ Kirk, uh, the Deep Fat Ride um, podcast. They have their own YouTube channel. Um, it's him, Paul's ego, and TJ's brother, Scotty. And um, they were demonetized. Why? And YouTube says, hateful content. Listen, I've watched that show many times. There ain't no hateful content. <laughs> you could like TJ, dislike TJ, it doesn't matter. He, there is no hateful content. That's just not true. 100% incorrect on YouTube's part. And I'm seeing more and more now. By the way, just so everybody knows, yes, I'm bracing for impact. Because it very possibly can hit me. I was hit hard by the other two... Um, apocalypse situations. So I could be swept up in this as well. So here's the point, man. What a lot of people aren't getting is that it's a package deal. The only way you can have a YouTube where you get to see Kyle Kalinske rail against Israel, rail against Saudi Arabia, rail against American soldier war criminals, which I just did a couple shows ago. The only way you can have a YouTube where that stuff is out there and this channel is monetized is if you have a YouTube where Steven Crowder's channel is monetized and Steven Crowder's channel is up. So what YouTube did is they said to about Steven Crowder, we're not going to pull you down because we can't do that, but we are going to jack your funding and demonetize you. And then when they were pushed on that, to clarify, they said, well, no, the only reason why we pulled you down is not even necessarily because of the video that Carlos Maza put up documenting everything you said there, because we don't think any of that really crosses a line, um, a line where we can act. But you sell a t-shirt that says socialism is for, and the implication is, F-A-G-S. Again, I don't want to say, because now I feel like my channel would immediately get pulled down or whatever, or get demonetized. It's... Now, his dodge is, no, it doesn't actually say F-A-G-S. It says F-I-G-S. Socialism is for figs. That's like a fig leaf or something in the middle. I don't know. But that's a dodge, and you know that's a dodge, and that shirt is dumb. And I would say that, yes, that shirt is homophobic. I'm perfectly comfortable saying that uh, Steven Crowder is a bigot and Steven Crowder, Crowder is a homophobe. I just don't think being a bigot and a homophobe is something that should get you pulled down. I don't. If you haven't agreed with my analysis to this point, let me show you YouTube's official blog, and then maybe you'll understand why this is so dangerous and why people are playing with fire. Look at this. YouTube says, Our ongoing work to tackle hate. Over the past few years, we've been investing excuse me, in the policies, resources, and products needed to live up to our responsibility and protect the YouTube community from harmful content. This work has focused on four pillars. Removing violative content, raising up authoritative content, Hmm, what the fuck is that? Reducing the spread of borderline content. Really? You want to reduce the spread of the border? So not just the things that cross the line, the things that, eh, maybe, maybe not cross the line. Reduce the spread of that. And rewarding trusted creators. Thanks to these investments, 
Videos that violate our policies are removed faster than ever and users are seeing less borderline content and harmful misinformation. Who determines what the fuck is and isn't misinformation? As we do this, we're partnering closely with lawmakers and civil society around the globe to spread, uh, to limit the spread of violent extremist content online. We review our policies on an ongoing basis to make sure we are drawing the line in the right place. In 2018 alone, we made more than 30 policy updates. One of the most complex and constantly evolving areas we deal with is hate speech. We've been taking a close look at our approach towards hateful content in consultation with dozens of experts in subjects like violent extremism, supremacism, civil rights, and free speech. Based on those learnings, we are making several updates. Removing more hateful and supremacist content from YouTube. YouTube has always had rules of the road, including a long-standing policy against hate speech. In 2017, we introduced a tougher stance towards videos with supremacist content, including limiting, limiting recommendations and features like comments and the ability to share the video. This step dramatically reduced views to these videos, on average 80%. Let me pause. These are such amorphous concepts. So you pull down some people who are like white nationalists, for example, they're immediately going to turn around and go, okay, so take down the black nationalists. To be fair to them, they might say, okay, we'll take down like Louis Farrakhan. But guys, if you go early into Malcolm X's career, a lot of this stuff is flat out anti-white, like hardcore, like all white people are devils. Uh, he believes in black identitarianism, black separatism. So the second you go, okay, we're going to go after the the guys on the right, they're immediately going to yelp about that and go, well, I mean, you got to be neutral, right? You got to be objective. So you got to go after those people too. And then the argument, of course, will be made next. Well, pfft, you got to go after the anti-fascists also. The anti-fascists are pretty open about the fact that they believe in, um, you know, authoritarian tactics. They believe in violence to meet their political goals. So are you really going to be fair in your application of this? This is the road that we're going down now. They continue. Today, we're taking another step in our hate speech policy by specifically prohibiting videos alleging that a group is superior in order to justify discrimination, segregation, or exclusion based on qualities like age, gender, race, caste, religion, sexual orientation, or veteran status. This would include, for example, videos that promote or glorify Nazi ideology. By the way, they are not just doing that. They're pulling down people who cover history because they say, I don't know, you have Nazi content in there. That's just as bad as promoting it which is inherently discriminatory. Finally, we will remove content denying that well-documented document, violent events like the Holocaust or the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary took place. We recognize some of this content has value to, to researchers and NGOs looking to understand hate in order to combat it, and we are exploring options to make it available to them in the future. And as always, context matters, so some videos could remain up because they discuss topics like pending legislation, aim to condemn or expose hate, or provide analysis of current events. They are not walking that line. They're taking down everything or demonetizing everything on that front. We will begin enforcing this updated policy today. However, it will take time for our systems to fully ramp up and we'll be gradually expanding coverage over the next several months. So when they say we're going to take down stuff like, you know, Holocaust denying videos, Sandy Hook denying videos and stuff like that. But that's the next the next logical question is, all right, what about 9-11 trutherism? OK, then what about, you know, people who say uh, the official story on JFK isn't true? What about people who question right now the the Pentagon's arguments on what's happening in Syria. So if you question whether or not it was Assad or literal jihadist rebels who were responsible for the gas attacks, for example, is that a conspiracy that where they could take you down? What about at a time when everybody thinks something, but that turns out to be the conspiracy? Like, you know, when they all said Saddam Hussein was responsible for 9-11, he has weapons of mass destruction... If YouTube was around at that time and they implemented this policy, they would have said, if you say Saddam Hussein doesn't have weapons of mass destruction, you're the conspiracy theorist. So we're going to pull you down. Do you see the zillion ways this goes wrong? All right, more. Reducing borderline content and raising up authoritative voices. In addition to removing videos that violate our policies, we also want to reduce the spread of content that comes right up to the line. In January, we piloted an update of our systems in the U.S. to limit recommendations of borderline content and harmful misinformation, such as videos promoting a phony miracle cure for a serious illness or claiming the Earth is flat. 
We're looking to bring this updated system to more countries by the end of 20, 2019. Thanks to this change, the number of views this type of content gets from recommendations has dropped by over 50% in the US. Our systems are also getting smarter about what types of videos should get this treatment, and we'll be able to apply it to even more borderline videos moving forward. As we do this, we'll also start raising up more authoritative content and recommendations, building, building on the changes we made uh, to news last year. For example, if a user is watching a video that comes close to violating our policies, our systems may include more videos from authoritative sources like top news channels in the Watch Next panel. So, do you understand what they're saying? They're trying to say anything that's even remotely close to being considered fringe well, we're just going to redirect you back to CNN, back to MSNBC, potentially back to Fox News, back to CBS and ABC and the nightly news. So in other words, you go to YouTube to get away from the standard establishment line, and they're going to redirect you right back to the standard establishment line. Now you say, well, Kyle, that's not fair. They're saying um, content that uh, just crosses the line. No, they're literally not saying that. They're saying borderline content as well. So let me ask you, is it possible that somebody watching this vi watching one of my videos when I go after Saudi Arabia as hard as I do or I go after Israel as hard as I do or I go after religion as hard as I do I just ripped a televangelist pastor the other day and in the process somebody could say oh, I don't know that sounded vaguely anti-christian so we think maybe you're a bigot against Christians so now we're just going to redirect you to other videos and even though you like watching secular talk irrelevant what happens when there's a an ISIS terror attack and I mention hey part of this is fueled by uh the the fact that these are fundamentalist um Wahhabi Sunni Muslims. So it is the religion that plays a massive part in this. Can they then spin that, uh, turn that around on me and say, you're saying Islam is the problem and that's hate speech, that's Islamophobia, so we're going to redirect you elsewhere. This is what happens. This is what happens. So they're going to use this example to turn around and be more authoritarian, more censorious, demonetize more channels, and try to squeeze out the fringe voices, not just on the right, but also on the left, and they want to make it so YouTube is safe. Safe for advertisers. Safe for a middle-aged housewife in an upper-middle-class neighborhood who doesn't want their kids stumbling across something that makes them feel slightly uncomfortable for five seconds. That's what they want YouTube to be. And careful what you wish for, people on the left, because you're going to get it. Apparently, Carlos Maza has tweeted that conservatives should be milkshaked. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, good for you. That means you're not plugged in 24-7 and you actually live a life. Um, but that was this trend that was happening in the UK where these conservative politicians would have uh, milkshakes thrown on them. And the idea is like to parody them and mock them. And I think in the UK, a milkshake is just milk. It's not actually like with ice cream and stuff. So, but it's throwing milk at people in public to mock them and make them look silly. Um, now, does that cross a line? Well, yeah, it crosses the line of you shouldn't like physically touch anybody. I mean, I would argue there's no actual harm being done, but at the same time, it's still wrong because you're imposing on somebody's physical being in a way that shouldn't be allowed. So, Carlos Maza tweeting that conservatives should be milkshaked, but at the same time, he's calling for Steven Crowder to be pulled down from YouTube because, uh, you know, Steven Crowder called him a lispy queer and all that stuff. Well, conservatives are obviously going to flip right back on you. The idea that you called for you know, a v admittedly very mild form of violence, but you did call for something that crosses the line into getting physical, obviously the conservatives are going to flip it on you and say, you should be pulled down from Twitter. You should be pulled down from YouTube. Look, you advocated for violence. Imagine if Steven Crowder said to Carlos Maza, hey, people should milkshake you. I don't like your videos, and people should milkshake you. Uh, my guess is that Carlos Massa would have used that against Steven Crowder as a reason to deplatform him. So, listen, careful what you wish for. This is what people need to understand. So, what I would say to Carlos Massa is, 
do you not get that the things that you're calling for will immediately be turned around and will bite you in the ass? I really don't think people are grasping with, with the fact that it's a package deal. The only way you get Kyle Kalinske or Jimmy Dore or any other lefty you want to name talking about how Iran is right and the U.S. government is wrong. Talking uh, on, you know, the, the nuclear issue and on the Iranian deal, the peace deal. And the only way you get us bashing Saudi Arabia, the only way you get us bashing Israel, the only way you get us calling out religious bigotry. The only way you get us going after the military industrial complex, the only way you get us going after fucking Wall Street CEOs is if you also get assholes like Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder saying assholey shit. Um, and I also think the view that many people have of YouTube is just wrong. I think that it is the public square now it is that youtube twitter and facebook are so big and so powerful and it is now our public square our town square and i think the only path forward that makes sense is you don't like oh it's just a private company and they get to make whatever rules they want to make are we really kidding ourselves with that argument i mean just to be clear that is a deeply conservative argument i have the left position and the left position is this 100 percent should be regulated as a public utility and First Amendment protections expanded. So the only time you can take act, action is if it's basically illegal, if it does cross the line into doxing or direct threats of violence or libel or slander. I think that that really are, there's only a very few fringe number of cases where you can act. And the rest of the time, it's live and let live, freedom of speech all day long, and let me be clear, that will benefit the left the most. Because whenever they start censoring, they will always come after the left. Always. Because we actually threaten power. The right likes to act like they're edgy and whatnot. They're power-serving sycophants. Steven Crowder is a power-serving sycophant. Okay? Big corporations, because he fucking cheers on their tax cuts and wants them to run society and fucking hates workers and shit. So, ultimately, it will always bite us in the ass. So, you have to view this issue through the prism of what are my principles on it. That's the most important way to view it. And if you don't do that, I think you're making a mistake. And unfortunately, the door has now been opened and the demonetization is in full effect. And um, this all could have been avoided.